Welcome to my latest video, exploring old railway lines in Shropshire and the surrounding area. This time I'm revisiting the Oswestry to Welshpool line. In that video I concentrate heavily on what was still actually there, such as the Heritage Railways. What I didn't look so much at was what isn't there. On this line there's a whole number of railway stations that have just disappeared. Stations tend to come in three categories. They're either made into Heritage Railway sites, uh, residential homes, or they just basically just disappear. On this line we've got five stations which have just disappeared off the landscape and it's those stations that I've come to search out. And I've got a map here of the Oswestry Street to Welshpool Railway but it's the stations of course which are no more that I'm looking for in particular and the first one we're going to be visiting is Pant here just north of Lanny Manic, and then Lanny Manic itself then four crosses and Pool Quay and finally Buttingham which is the fifth station I'm going to look at on this journey. Well the first port of call on our journey is Pant Station which is just north of Lanny Manuk in Shropshire. Well this is the view looking south and I'm guessing that driveway into that house is probably where the track went, almost certainly. Well this is the scene looking south in 1954 and this is the same scene in its last days in the 1960s. Interestingly this line was built as a single line so most of the stations just had one platform. Pant, like several of them, had an extra platform inserted when the line became double track. This is a nice panoramic view of the station looking south in 1925. This picture is from 1974 and shows some remnants of the station still standing. This picture shows the signal box in 1962. If we go back to this scene looking south from the old station, that's probably just about where I'm standing now. And that's the road bridge there. And if I scan round to the north and to the west, this is the site of the station here. And as you can see, it is totally different from those pictures that we were just looking at. There is absolutely nothing left of the station here at all. We've got the canal to the right, next to the bridge. And the station area is totally decimated. Well, I've just been standing here looking north, and of course there's nothing left of the station, the sidings and the track whatsoever. Now from Pant Station, we're now going to move down south into Lanny Menach. Well, if we look at this picture of Lanny Menach Station and the entrance, we can see that's where we're standing now. And we can see that sort of tarmac -y area which is where the station yard was the goods yard and the line and the platforms were just the other side. So here's the drive coming down. And this is the site of Lanny Manic Station. So straight in front of me is the line coming down from Ossestry. And here we can see what's left of the goods office on the Cambrian Railway side. And here we have the platform edge on the POTS line and I'm looking north and you can see the edge of the platform right in front of me. So that's the POTS line going north and of course it didn't go south, this was the end of the line. And in front of us we can see the road bridge with its extra supports.
These supports have been added relatively recently to give the bridge extra strength. This map from 1900 shows the layout of the station and here's the bridge that we've just been looking at and we have the Potts line to the right and the Ossesbury line going north. This picture was taken in 1920 and shows the Ossesbury line going to the left and the Potts line to Shrewsbury going to the right. Here is that same scene just a little closer in the 1950s. Here we have a train arriving from Oswald Street at that same scene, also taken from the 1950s. This busy scene from 1960 is an interesting picture because this was the last ever passenger train on the Potts line on its last ever visit, of course, to Lanny Manick Station. As we move on to 1962, this picture at Lanny Manick Station shows the Potts line overgrown and out of use. However, at the same time in 1962, the Welshport to Street line was still running and this is a northbound train to Oswestry in that year. And this is what's left of the south end of Lanny Manick Station. It's hard to believe that this was that once busy station we saw in those pictures. I'm now going to continue my journey from Lanny Manick Station down to Four Crosses. Well, I've arrived at Four Crosses and this is what's left of the station area, just the engine shed. Well, we can see here where the track used to be, coming from the south. And if I pan up to the north, the old station building would have been around here, just on the left-hand side. And the old road bridge crossing the railway was just to the right of that building, which can't be seen now. This concrete area here is where the track used to be, running south. So if we look at this picture taken from the north, we can see the engine shed in the background. The building here in the foreground is actually the site of the old station. And that is in fact this building here. If we pan round, the old road bridge would have been behind those trees there. This picture in the 1950s shows a train arriving from the south on its way to Ossestry. This picture shows the station looking north in 1955. This picture is looking north in the 1960s. In this 1960s picture we get a good view of the station sign. This picture also taken from the 1960s shows the goods shed in the distance. This picture is just taken a little bit further at the platform with a goods shed to the right hand side. Here's the same scene with a train arriving for Oswestry in 1963. This picture from 1966 shows the scene soon after the track had been lifted. This picture taken in 1974 shows the goods shed and the down platform is still evident. The next part of my journey sees me going further south towards Welshpool and I'm going down to see what's left of Pool Quay Station. Well, I've arrived at Pulkey Station. Well, when I was searching for Pulkey Station before, I was really looking in the wrong place. I was looking a bit too far south. The station actually was up here where the line crossed what is now the Oswestry to Welshpool Road. And we're looking at the station site now in front of us. This undated picture shows the passing loop on the right-hand side. Added next to it was a wooden platform, later to be replaced by a proper stone platform. This picture from the 1960s looking south shows that stone platform added to the passing loop on the left hand side. This picture also from the 1950s shows it from the other direction. This next picture is looking north in the 1960s. And this picture is looking south in 1963. This picture shows the signal box of the station sign in 1964. And finally, fairly sadly, this picture was taken in 1965 after the line had closed, but before the track was lifted up. 
Well, if I go forwards 10 years, this site here where I'm standing looked completely different. Well, if I go back to that picture from 1964, just before the line closed, that station building would have been just over there in the distance where that uh, farming building is. Well, the site today looks like it did in 1974. It's just a bit more green and a bit more hedge growth and tree growth. Sadly, unless you knew what you're looking for, you would have never have known there was a railway station here in the past. I'm now going to do the final leg of this journey from Pool Quay down to Buttingham Junction. Well I've reached Buttington and this is the site of Buttington Junction. We've got the existing Walshpool line branching up there towards Shrewsbury to the right and straight ahead of us in that smallish gap is the line up to Oswestry or where the line used to go up to Oswestry. Very overgrown now by trees of course. This was that same scene back in 1974, not very overgrown then. In 2013 we can see the scene much more overgrown, which is what we can see today. Well, if we look back at that picture from 1953, it's hard to believe this was the same scene. We can see there the Shrewsbury line coming down from the right and the Oswestry line coming from the left. We've also got some station buildings and a signal box and a bridge. But if we look today, absolutely nothing left at all. It's a great shame when stations disappear completely, like they do on this line from Oswestry Street to Welshpool. Uh, here at Buttington, for example, there's absolutely no trace left of the station whatsoever. And in fact, there's quite a few examples on this line where they've completely gone. However, if you do your research, it's actually quite rewarding to go and seek out and find them. And it's been really brilliant today to find exactly where these stations were and what is left of them and what their legacy is.